In this example, we want to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this matrix 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 0. We start by finding the characteristic polynomial using the normal determinant formula, which in this case gives you the determinant of 3 by 3 matrix, 3 minus lambda, 0, 0, 1, 2 minus lambda, minus 2, minus 1, 1, negative lambda. We can expand along row 1 here to get this is equal to 3 minus lambda times the determinant of the bottom right minor, which comes out to 2 minus lambda times minus lambda, and then plus 2. We can expand out this expression here that we want to be equal to 0. So we know we have lambda equals 3 as an eigenvalue. Great. For the second part, we're going to use the quadratic formula. We get that lambda should be 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 2 times 1 all over 2, or 1 plus or minus i. So we have one real eigenvalue and then a pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues. Great, let's go about finding the eigenvectors now. So for lambda equals 3, we want to subtract 3 from each diagonal entry, giving us the matrix 0, 0, 0, row of zeros, that's good, 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 1, minus 3. I can rearrange the rows to start with, and then add row 1 to row 2, 1, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 0, minus 5. I can reduce to 1, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And this gives me the following equations. V1 minus V2 minus 2V3 equals 0, and V3 equals 0. But the V3 is 0, so this term is gone. I can now pick V2 to be 1, and so V1 is 1 as well. So my vector here is going to be 1, 1, 0. Now for the complex, we've got to be a little more careful with this. We're going to only pick one of the two complex eigenvalues because the other vector will be a conjugate of the one we get this way. So we'll just pick lambda to be 1 plus i and write our matrix again. So we have 3 minus 1 plus i, 0, 0. We have 1, 2 minus 1 plus i, minus 2, minus 1, 1, and negative 1 minus i. Simplify these out a little bit. Let's start by swapping rows 1 and 2 to put a 1 in the top corner to make this a little bit easier. Now we're going to cancel everything below that 1 in the top corner. The top row will stay the same. The bottom row, we're going to add one copy of row 1 to it. So I'll get a 0 in this slot. I'll get a 1 plus a 1 minus i is a 2 minus i. And I will get a negative 1 minus i plus a negative 2 is a minus 3 minus i. And for the middle row, I want to add i minus 2 has the first row to it. So I do that, I'll get a 0 here. Here I will get 1 minus i times an i minus 2. Here I'll get negative 2 times an i minus 2. Because I'm adding, row 2 is going to be row 2 plus i minus 2 times row 1 because then I'll get rid of the 2 minus i in that first slot. Now let's combine these complex numbers. 1 minus i times i minus 2 is going to give me i minus 2 minus i times i, so it's a plus 1, and then plus a 2i is going to be a negative 1 plus 3i. So I will see here, top row is the same, 0, negative 1 plus 3i, and this will be a 4 minus 2i, 2 minus i minus 3 minus i. And what I want you to see if and how these equations are redundant is to put a real number in the first spot of these two vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the second row by a negative 1 minus 3i. It's the complex conjugate of the number that's in this spot here because that'll put a real number there. And I'll multiply the third row by a 2 plus i. So if I do that scaling, that will leave me with the same top row, a middle row, which will be negative 1 plus 3i, negative 1 minus 3i, 4 minus 2i, negative 1 minus 3i. The bottom row, 0, 2 minus i, 2 plus i, negative 3 minus i, 2 plus i. 
And we should work at all these complex numbers here to see what we get. So negative one plus three i, negative one minus three i is gonna be one minus three i plus three i, and then three i times minus three i is nine is plus nine. It's gonna give me a 10 there. Right, and this is a difference of two squares. It always is, so these will always cancel out. For the other part of that row, four minus two i, negative one minus three i, negative four plus two i, minus 12 i, minus six, two minus signs, plus the i squared gets me a minus one. So this is negative 10 minus 10 i. In the bottom row, the two minus i, two plus i is difference of squares again, so it's gonna be that two minus i times two plus i is gonna be four plus one is five. And in the last column, I will see minus three minus i times two plus i gets me a minus six minus two i minus three i, and then a plus one. i squared is minus one with a one minus sign, which is negative five minus five i. You can see what's happening here. If I rewrite these out, I get the following. Top row is the same. This row becomes a zero, a 10, negative 10 minus 10 i, zero, five, negative five minus five i. These equations are now the same. We row reduce down, then divide the second row by 10, to lead me to one, one minus i minus two, zero, one, negative one minus i, zero, zero, zero. And now I can find what I want for all my different components here. So the equations we get from this are v1 plus one minus i v2 minus two v3 equals zero, and v2 minus one plus i v3 equals zero. So I can pick v3 to be one. The second equation then tells me that v2 is one plus i times v3, which is just one plus i. And I can go to the first equation. In the first equation, I have that v1 plus one minus i times one plus i minus two should equal zero. One plus i times one minus i is, difference of two squares, one plus one is two. So v1 plus two minus two equals zero means that v1 is zero. So in summary, for eigenvalue one plus i, we got eigenvector zero, one plus i, and one. And then we know that by complex conjugates, that the fact that the conjugate eigenvalue must have a conjugate eigenvector, we then know that if lambda is one minus i, the vector that I get is zero, one minus i, and one. We can then combine it with our answer from before, that for lambda equals three, our vector was one, one, zero, now give a full and complete answer for this problem. We have now found three eigenvalues, two of which were complex, and their corresponding eigenvectors as well. Let's go through the process top to bottom. Find the eigenvalues, go through each one to find the eigenvectors respectively. If you have complex pairs, the equation solving process is harder, but you'll have to do it once for each pair of complex eigenvalues because then the other eigenvector is the conjugate and then walking all the way down to a final solution with eigenvectors and eigenvalues for each of the different eigenvalues of this matrix.